that time. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep's gate a pool in Hebrew called Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. An angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and troubled the water. Whoever stepped in first <coughs> after the troubling of the water was healed of whatever disease he had. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him, knew that he had been lying there for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is troubled. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your pallet and walk. At once the man was healed, and he took up his pallet and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your pallet. But he answered him, them, The man who healed me said to me, Take up your pallet and walk. They said to him, Who is the man who said this to you? Take up your pallet and walk. Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, but Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See that you are well. Send no more that nothing worse may befall you. The man went away and told the Jews it was Jesus who had healed him. Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now endeavoring to ages of ages. Amen. Anna, come on, let me bless you and leave life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, now endeavoring to ages of ages. Amen. Uh, this is an interesting story. Uh, the Sheepsgate Pool was very near the temple in Jerusalem, and there were actually two pools there, one of which they used to wash the lambs that were presented as sacrifice in the altar in the temple in Jerusalem, <clears throat> and that's why it was called the Sheepsgate Pool. <clears throat> At any rate, um, there had been a long time the idea that miracles occurred there that the spring was a healing spring, but it happened only on occasion when an angel stirred the water, and whoever got into the water first was healed. And this poor man had been um, laying on one of the porticos around the, the pool for 38 years. Uh, he was badly lame, and he could never get in the pool first because there was no one to help him get in the pool first. And, of course, Jesus knew all of this with his uh, precincts. And uh, he looked at the man and said, do you want to be well? And the man immediately said, well, I have no one to put me in the pool. And Jesus said, to heck with the pool. Stand up and walk, take your pallet and go. Now, the amazing thing about this was, uh, this entity is the third of the great signs that Jesus is the Messiah in the Gospel of John. The first one was the, uh, the miracle at the wedding of Canaan in Galilee. And uh, the... Uh, the leaders of the Jewish nation, supposedly holy people, the scribes and Pharisees, were upset. They ignored the reality of this incredible miracle, the healing of this man who was lame. And what they focused on was the fact that he carried his pallet, which was a violation of the Jewish rules about no work on the Sabbath. So they focused on a very minor thing and missed the point of the power of God healing this man's uh, paralysis. Uh, and that was characteristic of what had happened uh, to the people of God 
that God had chosen to show the world the one true God. They had become so obsessed with a set of rules down to minor little things that they missed the important things of God. And consequently, Jesus as God was focused on the important things and kept running afoul of their stupid little rules. And I wonder today if we don't do some of the same thing. If we don't, in our mind, make rules. And one of the reasons that we make rules is because God is inconvenient. When God blows freely like the wind of the Holy Spirit, He does things that are inconvenient to us, that cause us to have to do things we don't want to do. And so if we can lock God in a box by making a series of these little rules, that if we obey them, we're okay with God, then God is no longer dangerous to us and no longer causes us problems because He no longer stirs our hearts and demands things of us that go beyond our petty rules. Um, it's interesting that Jesus said to the man, go and sin no more, but something worse occurred to you. Uh, we went through a period when we thought it was cruel to say that you're sick because of things you've done wrong. That was cruel to people. So illness was illness. It just happened. There was no reason. But of course we now know that there are a lot of things that cause us problems. Too much weight, smoking, uh, all kinds of things. Excessive drinking, uh, all kinds of behaviors of ours get displaced in our bodies. And the result is that we become sick. And one of the interesting things is that um, I had bypass surgery in 2001, and the rule was that the new arteries that they installed to bypass the ones that were clogged with plaque usually only last 10 years because they usually plaque up again. And the reason for that was that the people that had heart disease didn't make the life changes necessary to stop impacting their body. And so the result is the new veins from their legs that became arteries plaqued up again, and they were in trouble again. Uh, and it was because we didn't look at the effect of how we live uh, on our bodies. God designed our bodies by rules. If we break the rules, then we have problems. Now certainly there are things that don't fit that paradigm, okay? Babies who are born with horrible heart conditions or other kinds of problems that sometimes that's a result of misbehavior by the mother during the pregnancy but sometimes not. But at any rate, uh, for most of us, when we get illnesses that are related to how we live, we are breaking the rules about how God intended us to live. And so that's why Jesus made a point to say to the lame man, don't sin anymore, so that nothing worse happened to you in terms of displacing it in your body. Now the overriding uh, message of this gospel lesson is that Jesus healed people even when they didn't ask for it. And that His love and grace is so overwhelming out of care for human beings, for you and me and everybody else, that He is willing to do things to help and save us even when we don't ask. And that is indeed a loving God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and ages of ages. Let us say with all our souls,